Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks uh, for uh, Sophie and uh, Stephanie. That's a uh, hack my trip when I was uh, coincidentally in Europe. This is my second participation in Coded Cultures. It's really nice to be here. Hello. And also the team, Matthias and friends. Uh, today I'm going to talk about more about the collaboration between uh, my organization. Uh, I, live from, I live in Indonesia, Jakarta. Uh, I'm a part and a co-founder of LifePatch, uh, small communities that uh, basically have uh, 11 members at the moment. This is our uh, profile picture. Uh, and we pret uh, pretty much we are like a combination of scientists, artists, like I'm from civil engineer, but I do mostly art and electronics. There's Tim Bill who's like a farmer and like to, do, to ferment his own wine, also a yoga master. And then Eo is uh, basically a creative coder, but he have an industrial engineering background. Ade who's uh, doing graphic design and video, but he's uh, studying design interiors. Ferial is a performance artist. Uh, Wawi is an architecture that uh, loves landscape photography. And Akbar was a poor scientist, scientist, and scientist. And basically, we are also a collaborator of Hakteria, which is uh, kind of like our sister organization. And this is this, the talk is going to be mostly about our collaboration. But, but before that, we uh, I will go into a little bit uh, of a. Uh, uh, background of uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, I found this meme was posted to my Facebook by my friend because, and I'm finding it funny because the last one that what I actually do is actually what I was doing pretty much when my friend uh, classified me as a hacker. They only asked me to install, reinstall their windows. And it reminds me of this uh, code, which is maybe if you have installed your Windows XP, you practically and uh, pirated XP license. This license I re remind, uh, remember pretty much in my head, because in Indonesia we use the same code for every XP. And because, yeah, I sometimes installed my friends and my own computer. So I pretty much uh, remember of this code. And this is happening in the early 2000s in Indonesia. And pretty much this is the, 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 great, the greatest leap of Indonesia into technology, basically. Because uh, at that time, pirated software is everywhere, and you can practically buy it for 30 cents, euro cents, or, yeah, dollar, or US dollar, pretty much uh, on that range. Or you can also rent it for five cents. You bring your ID card, you go to the rental shop, you leave your ID card, bring your CD, install it, bring it back, take your ID card. So this is uh, what is the first um, huge leap, I think, in Indonesia after the Suharto fall and introduced to technology and, of course, the internet. And so when my friend said, like, define me as a hacker, and I kind of looking into the definition of hackers, uh, I don't really like what uh, it shows, except for this one, the last one, a clever solution to a tr tricky problem. Maybe I, that's my, my uh, fun of a uh, definition of hacker. And recently, I also look into a cultural practice of hacking between the similar countries, and this is called Jugat from India. And I'm very surprised that Jugat is actually a very cultural word already in the, embedded in the Indian society. And when I see the picture of Jugat, and when you Google it, and I found very, very similar practices. And this, this, and and very creative uh, solution with two uh, accessible resources, materials that's available in their country. Yeah, this is quite hardcore. And also Gam Gambiara from Brazil also have uh, quite the same uh, practice. And this is some of the picture maybe. And I can, you've seen that one before and could also become really, really hardcore of the, the practices. And 
uh, it's this is just a picture that uh, I found in every way in Yogyakarta, which basically you ride, you have um, a scooter. That's the best way for you to mobile in your cities because the transportation really sucks. And pretty much I saw this every time in, in my daily life. Like they try to put as much as you can in a motorcycle because there's no other uh, uh, choices in public transportation. And then from that, I try to, to, to find the, 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 the cultural practice of Indonesia. And I found this word as OPREC. But when I Googled it, it's all about Android stuff. Here. And I'm quite confused of that, because in Indonesia also, uh, this is a common hack that in Indonesia is uh, called wajan bolik. It's basically a jar for cooking. And you put some kind of tube there, and this is to enhance your inter internet. Until 98, I still remember that we have 64 kilobyte per second internet. And this is allows us to steal from the university internet connection. And this Wajan Bulik is quite, quite uh, famous because they, they, uh, they give the tutorial to the people and how you can make it with your own plate. Of course, if you're not, your mother didn't catch you on stealing the, <laughs> the Wajan. And for me, it's very interesting that you, uh, well, I have to come back. Hey, pause, wait. Cable. There's so many uh, development of technology or hardware is developed by the citizen. So basically it's just like a, a trash that he cuts down and then by pushing the bottle into this tube that he make, it produces sound. And when you're like, if you're like building electronic synth synthesizer geek, and then you see that like, what? <laughs> because you're already like soldering for hours, and then this guy come like, <laughs> uh, to me, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting when you, when you give this technology, or give a resources, or just like people dealing with the situ situation in their da daily life, come up with a solution. Another example is this guy, and this is pretty common in Indonesia, where you can basically, in the, every corner in the streets, there's a, in the past two years, there's a lot of people uh, repair neon bulbs, like Philips or any neon bulbs. And uh, they will open the stand, just, just a chair with their soldering iron, like the picture like that. And uh, you come, that with, uh, come there with your broken lamp, you give him 35 or to 50 cents, depends on the brand of your bulb, if it's Philips is more expensive, basically. And he will fix it, you just wait it for one hour and then fix it. Fix it. And I tried to do that, uh, this is just an uh, example, his name is Sutejo, and from, from that, Part when I when I try to fix it uh, to come to the to his place, it's just basically just to change one part, and he can earn thirty eight dollars basically per day. And to a bit uh, a bit of math, for us one dollar we can eat basically outside in the with a good just common restaurant outside for Indonesian at least. So it's 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 a, it's a big income for him just to repair. This lamp. Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and it reminds me of the old products uh, of my favorite ever keyboard when I was small. It's this Casio VL1. 
and any other product that was released in the 80s, a lot of them release service manual that you can repair your own products. It's, for me, it's, 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 it's very uh, fascinating to remind this, to compare with today's product when you have your iPhone or whatever that's broken. When it's broken, pretty much in countries like Europe, for example, it's more expensive for you to repair, to give it to the repairman, rather than to buy a new one. And this repair thing is going on in Indonesia and many, uh, many uh, various practices. This one is making a new TV from the old one. And he just caught by the police because he's releasing his own brand from an old TV that he repaired. And then he got support from 27,113 netizens. So the TV can get a standard national Indonesia uh, license. His name is Kusrin. It's Kusrin. And uh, the 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 most uh, kind of very sad for me that the government just take it and burn it. All that work. So after the support of 27,000 people, this TV. Up, oh, sorry. Can I skip forward? This TV is, uh, he finally got his license and Indonesia have the first television uh, brand from a guy who's just graduated from elementary school. So he just practiced by repairing. And this stuff he sold for $40. Usaha TV rakitan milik Muhammad Kusrin di Gondang Rejo Karanganyar kini mulai hidup lagi. Belasan pekerjaan dia di Aktif Small Lab with uh, he there's 40 employees that is standar nasional yang sedang menjadi batu sandungan for him to release this this uh, television. That's the type the the, the brand Max Kusrin Ring. kini telah his... resmi mengantongi SPPT atau sertifikat produk pengguna tanda standar nasional Indonesia untuk merek TV Max Ring. Meski mengaku lega, kini Kusrin dihadapkan pada tantangan baru. So, and another another very interesting thing is this guy. Is this time in the internet is blown up because this guy built his own prosthetic by controlling with EEG. He claimed it's controlling EEG, and a lot of internet say that it's it's a hoax. Kayak ini dah, saya bawa obat kan, saya minum obatnya kan, pahit, obatnya kan pahit. Saya bilang manis kan bohong saya, nanti keluar lah sinyal ke otak saya kan blablab gitu di LED-nya itu, LED-nya itulah saya manfaatkan gitu. Saya power, kasih power, lagi saya tinggikan, tinggikan. Nanti ada di relay kan, masing -masing. relay itu kan dari baterai, e, baterainya khusus untuk gerakin e, dinamonya. E, kalau bahasa kerennya, aktuatornya lah khusus, maka relaynya tek, itu kan dia aktif deh, terus, terus gitu. Tek, kayak saklar modelnya ini e, sederhana sekali sebenarnya, saklar. Ini sebenarnya tidak terlalu canggih, tapi hanya pola pikir aja. Orang-orang kan kadang-kadang tidak bisa bercerita dalam pikiran, kan gitu. Itu aja kuncinya sebenarnya. Kalau bisa bercerita di dalam pikiran, itu udah kayak yang saya bilang tadi, pil pahit bilang manis, berarti kan lain ceritanya gitu. Otomatis kan dia bilang alat uji kebohongannya e, nyala lednya, pas nyala itulah saya manfaatkan gini. Again, the technology that uh, that his explanation is very in not really explaining the technical of how he can develop that arms. And yeah, I can. I, I wouldn't say it's a hoax or not, but the the fact that he tried to build his this prosthetic is really mind blowing to to all the society of Indonesia. The government governor just then came and support him to for his research in making his uh, prosthetic. And 
it works. Even though it's not EEG, but it helps his hand to be stronger for work. And to, to, to see that, uh, uh, how, how Indonesia is lacking with this accessible and infrastructure, this is one of the most like, viral pictures in the internet. It's very important that we come up with a, with a, with a shareable knowledge of hardware and soft, uh, software that we can develop together. This is a, a tutorial that I, I, I found in Hacteria Lab and in Hacteria, an organization that's uh, kind of more like a platform where they produce knowledge, share it to, uh, through their wiki, documented it, and we give this workshop even to the university in Sanata Dabar, Sanata Dharma University in Yogyakarta, which they don't have an adequate lab infrastructure. This is a DIY distillation method using a rice cooker. And with the, again, like the, the natural uh, resources, I'm thinking about like all this trash uh, that's uh, polluted our river and ocean. We, we did a project together with, uh, with our friends just to bring the citizen come to the river that's next to you. And we post it in Facebook, invite all, and people come, and this is what we found in the, in the river. Basically, it's when raining, the, rain, the water goes up, also the trash, and it's stuck to the, uh, to the trees. When the water below, the, the, the trash stay there. And we try to, to make this kind of project with the communities that we can share and develop uh, a common platform, and uh, this project we focus on E. coli detection in the river, the main river of Yogyakarta. And speaking of this, this uh, local resources, this is uh, also a module that uh, we develop. It's de developed from the, the source from Hacteria. It's a very simple introduction to electronics by moist sensoring, which in total is 9,450 rupiah, which not even one dollar, to, to introduce to the people about hardware and electronics. And to me, this is more, more reasonable rather than you introduce to Makey Makey, which is like two million dollars, uh, two million rupiah, sorry, 200 dollars something. And for us, again, one dollar is one, one time eating for us. It's impossible for you to to, to afford makey makey just to introduce to electronics. So this is what we developed together within Life Patch and Hacteria. And we have, uh, when you give that to the people, again, we organize the event, we call it Solder Sin, Sen, Solder Sin Sen Sore Sore Sip. And it's amazing that uh, what they can, they can develop. And we try to kind of develop the, the module to make people more interested to electronics by not afraid first. Like uh, we designed this kind of uh, hand-drawn PCB so uh, people get interested, what is that? It's not that afraid, ooh, what is this electronics? I don't want to know. And we share that it's in, in, in all various classes and this is kind of like the workshop result with the, the people that they, follow, they make their own models. And this is all to our friend Mark part of Facteria that came every year to our places. And he always bring this, this open source hardware. This is the baby Gnus Buino on a tiny 85, which is cost like $1. We developed it together. This is our lab practically in 2012. And there's so much that we produce together by just sharing the information and using the common accessible technology between Swiss and Indonesia. And of course, as we, uh, we, we uh, put it open source, a lot of people also developing it. For example, this is from the Colombia, the one with the heart, from Medellin, Colombia, Plato Hedro. They, they make their own also uh, version of uh, this uh, synthesizer called 8-bit mixtape. <laughs> which I have here, a little bit demonstration. I put it like in a cassette. Yes. 
And to this, uh, I, I, I just want to, to add the, the importance of the common knowledge and sharing and also accessible resources to give education to the people is very necessary and in which we can have the common conversation between collaboration in different countries. Especially if you have uh, advanced infrastructure as in Europe and very low uh, infrastructure like in Indonesia. I think this pretty much uh, my talk now. <laughs> and this is the insight, by, by the way. I will give this if you can. Thanks. Thank you, so very, thank you so very much for the um, presentation and your amazing work that you're doing in Indonesia. Um, are, you, are there any questions out there from the audience? Um, thank you for your presentation and for taking the time coming here and energy and everything. Um, it's, it's very inspiring. It's always like amazing to see what, what the needs drive innovation like to amazing places like we saw in Indonesia, also in, in Cuba, people are, are doing like amazing DOI electronics and everything. Uh, I just want to commend you for, for the work and also uh, uh, for your collaboration with, with other people. And my question is if, if they're like the... Um, so you disseminate the knowledge through university, if I understood correctly? Now, usually in Indonesia, we don't have intermedi uh, inter uh, intermedia courses yet. So usually uh, by personal, like the lecturer asks us to give a workshop at their uh, classes, yes. Okay, so because that was my question, because uh, I found it like it must be really hard to, to share the knowledge through, through people, like if they don't have like, you know, digital media like internet and access to it and Mm. And stuff like that. So my question was, what was the way you found was the most effective, like to share this knowledge among people, and how to get, like you know, like young kids, like you showed with the PCB, you made it like really, really looking nice and and, and attractive. Like, what what were your tricks to 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 be effective in this? Yeah, first thing is cool. <laughs> it has to be cool <laughs> for people. They, it's it's have to be cool, and uh, then the, of course this is just generalizing that my target is more to young people, but it's also like useful, useful in terms like, uh, is it worth it for them to come to this workshop? And then third is the price. The, the, the thing that I mentioned why we have to keep it low cost. If we put a workshop with three, four dollars, for example, it's already very difficult for them. Again, one dollar is one time their meal, it's four time their meal to come to a workshop. And then if we introduce, for example, like a platform of, of Arduino, for example, it's $25, it's 25 th times their meal. So they, will, they wouldn't touch that. It's impossible for them to, to get started to electronics. So we, we developed the baby goodness, you know, which is like more like three or $4. And this is, I think the, the, the most efficient is to share this and to recognize the accessible uh, infrastructure in each country which country you, you're, you're targeting. So like you use posters, like you people? Only Facebook. Sorry, only Facebook? Yeah. Okay. Because, but Indonesian is crazy about Facebook. They're number three, I think, now. Yeah, I heard Largest that. user, yeah. So we make use out of that, and then we have a wiki. Okay. Yeah. And, but how do, like, people, like, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. But how do people, like, because, like, if, if you want to, like, find a Facebook page, you have to, like, know how it's called, to, to like it, to receive the info. So how, how, like, it's just, like, it's sharing through Facebook and you just started sharing among friends and they share it forward? Or do you, like, I don't know, make graffiti with your name or bacteria or stuff like that? Yeah, we have, like, a, basically our main social media is just Facebook and Twitter. Okay. And our website is just a wiki format, which they can find... But we always try to just give the link so they open to our website all the okay. time. Just one picture and one link, and then okay. info explanation. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much again. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Andreas. Um, are there any further questions? Oh, yeah. 
So LifePatch is called Citizen Lab, right? Can you explain um, how did you get to that term, Citizen Lab? Oh, yeah. Uh, we have a tagline called Citizen Initiative in Art, Science and Technology. I don't know how we can come up with that. But uh, we, we try to make a common, common uh, place because if you put it in art, the scientist doesn't have uh, any priority to be there. Because for them, like, I'm doing art while he's a scientist, in their own practice or their own career, there's no benefit for them. And this collective is just only working for art. And if you call it with science, it's only for science. So we come up with the citizen, and it's just, it is a bit confusing with what the citizen meaning in Indonesian term. But for us, uh, citizen, calls warga, which is mean like a collective collectivity which is already there. Like I, I, I just explained in the inter interview that uh, we have a culture that our house is always open, like Life Patch Lab. The door is always open, maybe because we are in tropic. And basically people just come in, neighbor, children, and we know our neighborhood. There's even like a collective uh, collectivity of a uh, uh, neighborhood watch where the people that live there take turns in guarding the neighborhood. Every, every once a month, I have to go participate, don't sleep until 4, 4 a.m., and just to take care of, of my, my neighborhood. So this kind of like uh, citizen that, that we're meaning, I don't know the term here in Europe, maybe it's, it might be different. All right. Thank you very much, Andreas. Yeah. Um, I think this was a, an amazing talk to actually mm. start the discussion on a very uh, social aspect and the very real life influences um, things like open hardware can have. Um, mm -hmm. We will have more about that um, mm. in the next session. Um, so there's a break right now. Um, and please try to be back in like 10 minutes so we can continue. Thank you again, Andreas. Thank, Thank you. you.